Hi everybody, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. And in this screencast we're going to continue our series on Mountain Lion Server. We're going to talk about users and groups and how you set those users and groups up so that you can have your accounts, so you have your network accounts going for you. Now, uh, the difference between Mountain Lion Server and Lion Server is they've made a few little tweaks to the interface that makes it a little bit more convenient. And I'll show you what that looks like as we get into it. You can see here, this is the user screen under my accounts. We've got the administrator account here. That's the one account that we have uh, going. Uh, just like any other account, if I click Edit User, uh, it'll bring up a screen. You can see that uh, we've got his uh, full name here. We can put in an email address. And then we can tell, this is an add to the, to the server, we can allow the user to log in and or to administer this server. So you could actually create a user that you won't allow to actually log in. Uh, for instance, if you've got a dummy account that you're using or something like that, you can limit their ability to actually log into the server. And like I said, this is a this is a new option that's been added to Mountain Lion Server, which just increases your security a little bit. Uh, you also can set up a disk quota where you can say, hey, uh, if I'm going to put home folders on here, this guy can only use up so much space on the server. So that, that way you don't have people taking up all of your hard drive space and uh, and then you run out in a hurry. So you can limit how much the users use. Uh, this is great for home users. If you've got kids that you're putting on the server, you want to limit how much uh, they can put on the server, you can put a limit on there so that they're not just downloading all kinds of stuff and hogging up the space. So that works out pretty good. And then you can add groups. Uh, to a user as well. Just like we had in Lion Server, you've got the full name of the person and you've got their uh, short name that they can use either of those to log into uh, the server. And, uh, and that's kind of the basic screen, the basic configuration with those two little changes there in the middle. Now I'm just going to click Cancel here and go back. You'll also notice this bar up here, and this is different in a new uh, add to the server, and that is you can view local users local network users are all users. Now you'll notice I've got it on local users. I've got the local administrator there because I haven't added any network accounts since I added my open directory. So if I go to local network accounts, network users, I expect to see nothing. And that's true. I don't see anybody there. But if I want to add some network users, I can do that. So let's just click the plus button here and show you what that looks like. So I'm going to add uh, John Doe uh, in here. Uh, let's just put John Doe. All right, and then his his name will put John D. How's that? And then we're going to put John uh, at server.com. It's going to make up some email address. Uh, make up a password. Um, okay, let's make up a password on there. And then now I can say whether I want him to administer a server or not, which in this case I don't. I just want to leave John alone. Now I can choose here where I want his home folder to be. And I'm going to do a little bit of uh, example on this probably in the next screencast to talk about home folders and how you mount them. But if you look, I can be local only, right, or none services only. All right, and I'll show you. Eventually, I can um, I can put down that it's okay for them to have a home folder on the server itself. All right, but for right now, it's just going to be local. So wherever his computer is, that's where his home folder is going to be. And I can set a disk quota. So I'm going to set him at uh, oh I don't know. Let's set him at. I don't want to give him just 500 gigabytes. Let's 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 give him five gigabytes. Okay, so I'm going to give him five gigabytes of disk quota limited usage that he's got. Okay, now I'm going to click done, and now it's going to. If you look down here, it's creating user John Doe. It's setting him up again. As you see this gear spinning, that means that the server is working, and now we have John Doe. And John Doe is set up here. He's one of our uh, network users, and he's on our uh, on our account there. He's ready to go. So now if I look at local users, I still only have one. Network users, I've got John Doe. And then all users, I've got both of them. And you can see under here, it'll say local user. And this one says local network user. And again, that means that this is that he is a part of my open directory. Now, an important thing to remember, if you set up an administrator account and you're wondering, well, wait a minute, if I'm the administrator, I can't get to certain services. Well, that's true. You may need to make an administrator account and then an open directory account for yourself if you personally want to take advantage of all the other services and things that are only available through open directory. So just want to let you know the difference between those. So I've got John set up. Everything's good. Now, 
I can come in here, I can edit him, or I can edit his access to services. And what happens is we get the drop down here, and I can check on or off what services I want John to have access to. Maybe I don't want him to have access to uh, FTP. I can uncheck that so that that way he won't get access to it even if I open the service up. Or I can leave them all checked. So uh, what's great about this is, again, with your kids right up front, you can quickly kind of put on or take off things that you don't want them to have access to. I'm going to leave uh, John Doe alone with his services and just leave them there. Uh, I can also edit uh, his uh, mail options right here. So if I click this, here I can actually edit where his mail is stored, whether it's going to be stored locally or forwarded to wherever he's at, and I can limit his mail to however many megabytes I want uh, him to receive so that his inbox doesn't get super full and he just crams up all my hard drive space, but he's got to eliminate it at some point. Again, this is a new option that's been added into the users section uh, that wasn't there before as well. And then of course I can reset his password if I want to just right from here. So again, if you have kids, they forget their password, you can come right in here as the administrator and you can reset the password without having to have them remember what their password was when they uh, first put it together. So it works out pretty good. I mean, it's a, it's a nice setup uh, you know, to make that work. You can add all the users you want. Now on this side, we also have groups. And again, we have local groups, local network groups, and all groups. And you notice on our local network groups, whenever we create a directory server, it automatically creates a work group group. And that's where all of the people uh, normally who create who we create uh, network accounts to, they're included in the work group account. And so it's just kind of one bucket account that they can all go into. And again, when you say all groups, it tells us what kind of group it is. So if you've got kids, for instance, this is a great opportunity. You go, I don't want to change the settings all the time over and over again. You probably want to come in here and you want to add a, uh, you want to add a group. And you can just say uh, kids group right here and have the short name of kids group together. Click done. And now I've got another local network account called kids group. And then I can just drop users into those groups and, and uh, set it up that way. Uh, and I'll show you how to do that in a second. Uh, with this, I have the ability to actually edit the group. So I can edit uh, what the group has access to. So I can say, give this group a shared folder, because I think they should have a shared folder. And if you click this little arrow here, it will show you where their shared folder is. And you notice here, see local accounts, no shared folder, work group. And I haven't created the, the shared folder yet here for kids group because I haven't saved it yet. But it would create a folder right here where the kids group would be. And I'm showing you this just to show you where this is at in your Lion server setup. Okay, because it, it falls right in this zone right here. And so uh, that works out pretty good. So let me just close that down. Uh, I can have the members be message buddies. So on the messages application, they can talk to each other and they'll automatically be buddies if they're in that group. I can enable a group mailing list if I was using email. Uh, so that they would have their own email list uh, for those in the kids group. And it's a, again, in enterprise, that's a great way to set up email lists. Very quick and efficient and a great way to do it. You know, managers or whatever. Uh, and then I could create a wiki for the group, which I'm not going to do. Right here, then I can add members to the group. And that's where I can put a plus on here and I can say, well, I'm going to add John Doe. So I start typing John Doe and there he is. And I can add John Doe to this group. And you, and you notice it's got a little... Uh, bulb on there, a little group that shows that John Doe was added. And when I'm done, then I just click done and it will actually now create this group and it'll make those changes happen and now I've got John Doe in that group. So it's a great way to be able to make that. Now the other thing I can do is I can also access edit access to services for this group. So if I didn't want to do it for each individual user, I could do it per group and say, well, this group, these people only have access to these things. And you'll notice they only have access to file sharing here, nothing else. And so it makes it a convenient way to be able to manage people and their uh, settings by using groups. It's just a great way to, uh, to make it work. Of course, with any group, I can always click the minus button and the group will disappear. Uh, but uh, in this case, I'm going to leave it up there because I want to go back to John Doe just to show you what it looks like for him. I'm going to edit the user. And you'll see now John Doe showing in two groups. He's showing in a kids group and he's showing in a work group. And if you'll notice, see the little globe next to the people on there? That globe represents a network account as opposed to a local account. If it was a local account, there'd be no globe. It would just be the two heads. But because it's a network account, there's a little globe there that shows that that's that type of account. So again, a very, uh, very easy, simple way to manage your, uh, your users and your different groups. And uh, that's how you get them set up. And so if you've got kids or a family, it's a, it's a great way to just put all your kids in here, put them in a kids group, and you can manage them that way. 
So that's all I have for this week on setting up users and groups. You can go in and put in as many users as you want um, and get that started for yourself, and that will help us as we go forward with things like Profile Manager and some of our other services. So that's all I have for this week. I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac.